so this was the landscape for a while. And, and then all of a sudden, in, um, in the mid-2000s, uh, along came the ad exchanges. And the concept here was, much like the stock exchanges, these group of companies would establish a marketplace that would be much more transparent. There was a lot of you know, feedback that networks were opaque. And so these new exchanges would provide transparency and a much more efficient uh, uh, marketplace for the buying and selling of online advertising. However, as it turns out, the networks took advantage of this availability of inventory and started actually buying on the exchanges and still uh, acting as a principal arbitraging uh, the media. We're going to talk a little bit more about arbitrage later today. So then the agencies uh, developed what I call you know, media buying platforms. And these were divisions to help enable the purchasing of media over the exchanges and go around the ad networks. There's a, uh, one of my favorite um, Seinfeld episodes has Jerry buying a blazer at a high-end shop. And then he really doesn't like the salesman. And so he decides to return the blazer. And they said, what is your reason for returning? He said, spite. And he said, so you, he, sir, you cannot return a blazer for spite. He said, OK, fine. I don't like the color. They said, no, you said spite. Um, so, so really, the agencies set up these media buying platforms for spite um, to get back at the networks and take back the business that they felt was rightfully theirs. So do they do this on their own? No, no. The agencies, you know, uh, they, they, some, some are enlightened and have uh, made the decision that they ought to uh, take on some technology. But it's a tough, it's a tough, uh, it's a tough proposition for professional services and technology. They, sometimes they don't live that well together. And so they utilize the technology of a group of companies called, as we all know now by its famous acronym, DSPs, Demand Side Platforms, basically workflow and, and, um, and algorithm uh, companies that uh, help uh, buy the media. But, it, but it's not just there. This is audience targeted media, and so you need data. So all of a sudden, we need everything from data suppliers, data aggregators, and exchanges, which then transfer the data over to the data optimization layer. And that's really where the intelligence lies. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about who's sort of grabbing some of that intelligence, because some of the data exchanges have their own audience segmentation and data optimization. Some of the DSPs do some of the data optimization themselves. And then, of course, the creative optimization to change the, uh, change the uh, creative in real time. Well, all of a sudden now, because advertisers were seeing, were, were all of a sudden placing their ads on websites that they never dreamed they would go to, and so many that they don't in real time check, there needed to be uh, a, another group that came up called verification and attribution. And these companies basically are the good housekeeping seal of approval. You know, it used to be in a totally contextual buy era that you could just, you, you would have confidence that you could buy specific sites and you would approve those sites. Well, now uh, you can't because it's all happening in real time. You're buying the audience, not the, uh, not the sites. And so you need these verification companies. And then finally, there's been some very interesting developments in terms of some of these social and sharing tools that provide a unique uh, data source. So um, it's really an eye chart. Let's face it. There are uh, lots of uh, company logos on there. And let's not forget about the principles, right? It's easy at a conference uh, talking about networks and exchanges to get all self-important and think about ourselves. But at the end of the day, we work for someone else. Um, so we work for the publishers and the advertisers. Those are the principles of the advertising ecosystem. So some observations. Number one, obviously, it's an overcrowded marketplace. 24 categories, 192 companies, $2.5 billion of capital raised just on that page alone. Uh, kind of a no-brainer. If you think about it, think about a Thanksgiving dinner. In the year 2000, you had a few people around the table eating the turkey. Well, five years later, there were more people. And five years later again, the room is crowded, OK? And we're all trying to eat this little turkey. Meanwhile, in the room next door, there's a huge feast that's called TV. Um, so, um, and to think about it, you know, in, in, in this channel has a lousy $8 billion worth of ad spend in, in online. 
And if you compare that to, let's say, search, you got a lot fewer players. And guess what? $17 billion ad market. Now compare that to television, which, unlike these uh, crowded uh, channels, is basically comprised of three Jewish guys from LA. <laughs> and that's a $70 billion uh, marketplace. I need uh, audio here, please. So, um, so sizing the market, um, you know, if you were to think about what is the total size of the online ad display today, eight billion, and and according to eMarketer, you know, the guys that are in the business of up and to the right, um, it only goes to 16 billion in uh, in five years' time. Now you start parsing that down. How much percentage is audience targeted? And let's get really, really aggressive and say it'll be 50% in four years' time. It's an $8 billion market. Then how much is bought on uh, DSP platforms? And you parse it down even further. And then you take a look at the fees that a DSP uh, would earn. And you conclude that even with the most optimistic numbers, you get to a $400 million net revenue industry in four years' time. Well, over 400 million has been raised just on the demand side alone, and two and a half billion in the whole marketplace. What does that spell? That spells investment roadkill. Too many companies, and there's gonna be, there's gonna be some issues. So let's carve up the stack. I'm gonna borrow a page from uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Geffs, who uh, appropriately sort of, Jeffs, sorry. Uh, I thought it was Dutch. Um, the, the uh, they, where he spelled out the, uh, how the CPM breaks out on a sort of hypothetical spend. We just uh, changed the numbers to correct them. And um, so here is, in a network world, what it looks like. And it looks horrible for the publisher, right? So the advertiser spends $5. The publisher gets less than 2 And meanwhile, those ad networks are in there taking a huge chunk. Well, now, no Blackberries, now uh, let's go to a DSP exchange world. Well, the, uh, the, the landscape, it looks a lot more efficient, where the advertiser spends less, the publisher gets more, and all of a sudden, this sort of data element all of a sudden uh, grows materially. And by the way, data can represent even more than the value of the inventory. It all depends on, on the situation. So uh, observation number two is that the demand side capabilities are likely to amalgamate. So there is no reason. You know, there's obviously clearly too many point solutions here. And it's understandable why point solutions got developed. These are all uh, venture capital-backed companies. And so venture capitalists like their portfolio companies to focus, focus on doing one thing really well. And so that's what they have done. That said, the marketplace needs solution providers, integrated solution providers. So uh, uh, we believe that. The, the, the media buying, the DSPs, the creative optimization, the data optimization, will all uh, come together into, uh, into one. Um, second observation is that Google is coming to display in a big way. Yes, drama is necessary because, you know, Google looks at things very holistically, right? They dominate search. They Three and a half, three years ago, paid $3.1 billion for DoubleClick, which I believe will, will, will uh, look like one of the better uh, acquisitions in the space from a return on investment. That said, it's been three years of, of time ticking on $3.1 billion. They want a return on that investment, and they are planning to be in display in a major way. If you think about where they are today, they're in virtually every single component of the ecosystem. Not only that, they have unified billing. So they are trying to leverage their Trojan horse of double click into uh, publisher relationships and, and, uh, and the size and uh, breadth of the Google Content Network, and now, of course, the double click exchange to really attempt to have a major presence, I won't use the D word, uh, major presence in, uh, in display. Observation number four, data becomes ubiquitous and commoditized. So in a world where everyone understands the value of their data, they're, they're doing something about it, they're selling it, they're monetizing it. And so for the folks playing in the data space, you know, you're playing with a commodity whose pricing is going in what direction? Down. Um, yes, it's valuable data, but because it's so available, it will go down. Now, there are exceptions to this. 